this does not even deserve an introduction because this is dead serious. I want everybody to subscribe to the channel right now. Now, 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 now. John, John you listen to me. Get the damn video started or you're going to lose retention. I'm working on it. Listen, you don't understand. We are going to lose subscribers if the video doesn't begin. I'm working on it. Start the video. I want it done within the first one minute of the video. I'm working on it. Hello everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Infamous Web Comics, where I go over infamously bad web comics, and we do a little bit of critique and review. A um, couple of jokes. I figured to start out the series, we'd go over the most infamous web comic of all time. Those of you who don't know um, about Sonichu and Chris Chan, I, I don't even know where to begin. Arguably the most documented human being in history, Chris Chan is the first lol cow, the first let's player the first incel i would highly recommend a series by gino samuel uh called the comprehensive history of christian which is basically his entire life story it's about 85 parts and uh covers his entire life and they're all 40 minutes long i believe there are more condensed versions um if you want to find out more about this individual uh from turkey tom and gamer from mars do research at your own risk i'm going to give you every single content warning imaginable he rose up the prominence uh well, mostly for the attraction sign, but also for a comic called Sonichu. Let me preface this by saying I do not want to be a part of Christory whatsoever. I have no intentions of, like, getting anywhere near that. I'm just going to do this one video about this, and that's it. Okay, maybe a couple of meme clips here and there. All right, this is my favorite Christian clip. It's half Sonichu that you know of. Those that were born in this dimension, there were only, I know, if we're, there were only three of us that... We have Sancho, that's me, my father, a Ted Bundy. A Ted Bundy? Yeah. The, the serial killer? I'm just here to talk about the comic, all right? Um, usually, with these kinds of things, I try to separate the art from the artist, uh, but... You can't really do that with uh, Sonichu and Christian because the comics are actually about his life, really, and you're going to need some context for some things. This individual is transgendered, and we got to talk about pronouns for a moment. I'm still going to use he, him pronouns because usually I don't really believe in that Zer Zem's nonsense, but I'll call you what you want to be called. However, this individual is um, not a good person, for lack of a better phrase, has done several crimes, been arrested multiple times, did something really, really fucking gross and listen doesn't deserve that respect but we are going to try to look at these this comic series as an objective comic series nothing more nothing less it's going to be hard to like separate art from artists but we will try we will try so let's just begin with issue zero because he starts at zero for some reason. See, the thing with uh, bad web comics or bad art is sometimes the story behind them is more interesting. Um, I am very familiar with the story of Chris Chan. Um, so let's read this description here. Sana Chu is Chris's official life work, magnum opus, and largest contribution to society and culture. To most, however, it is a poorly drawn and written comic book series about the adventures and travels that befall a fictionalized version of himself and his imaginary friends. Oh, that, that he's married to in Dimension C-197, but <laughs> that's a whole other can of worms. Despite starting out as a comic about the titular character, it quickly turned into a wish-fulfillment outlet for Chris and his depraved fantasies, with Sonichu being a main character and name only. Let's go through. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna try to condense this video down as much as possible, but we are gonna go through the full series. So first we got this poorly drawn cover here with a really hard to read logo. Um, I'm all for traditional art and uh, comics, but this is a little ridiculous. So, hand drawn premiere issue. Go Sonichu. Go out and zap to the extreme. I will. Thank you, Father. Well, now he would consider himself mother, but whatever. All Sonichu material are copyrighted March 2000 to who knows when by Christopher Christian Weston Chandler, aka all those other names. 
2004, okay. When I started this infamous webcomic idea, um, I knew that I had to go I had to go over Sonichu, but, and I figured it'd probably be the best one to start out first because of the infamy, but, yeah, all right, let's, see, the thing is, in those Gino Samuel documentaries, um, I used to just kind of listen to them while I was working on my own webcomic, uh, Doomsayer, you can read it on my website, okay, plugs over, um, and whenever he went over an issue of Sonichu, I would just kind of zone out a little. So, let's go. Okay, I'm trying to read the layout of this page. So, we got Sonic fighting the Chaos Monster, right? From what I'm looking at, I would kind of read it from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But from the images, I'm thinking it's 1, 2, him getting the Chaos Emeralds, which 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, okay. He got, he got the number right. Supersonic, then somehow we go back over here, uh, and I think it looks like Pikachu enters here, and then we go up here, and down here, and then he's in the middle of the fight, and it looks like one of them's going into the Chaos Monster, right? Uh, okay, yeah, it looks like Sonic went into the Chaos Monster. Pikachu, right? Okay. Uh, then Pikachu and Sonic, and ouch, so they collide, there's a rainbow, 15 miles away, there's a girl Raichu, there's a rainbow, looks like the girl Raichu is climbing up the rainbow, um, let's see, that's Pikachu I think, and Sonic, right, or I guess that's both of them, right? Um, from what I'm saying, it looks like they both collided with the Pikachu and became the infamous Sonichu and Roshu, which confuses me because I only see one Pikachu in the previous page. My god, this is hard to follow. <laughs> no wonder people needed to follow, find all the context. Oh god, I need to take a break. Hold on. <laughs> this was, a uh, quite a bizarre origin story. Um, he's got other hedgehogs. Oh yeah. Of course he does, right? I forgot. It was, uh, uh, what the hell was it? It was, uh, uh, was it Quick? Or Chris Chan and the Hedgehog Boys. That was his band. Don't you guys know that? Uh, because he's a virgin with rage. <laughs> Characters. This is Sonichu, the electric hedgehog Pokemon and main character. Age 16 years. Hobbies. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Sonichu's 16 and Rose Chu's 15. And there was that one particular, um, issue. <laughs> you, you guys know that one. I'm like, oh, okay, well, they're underage. Um, well, it's just a drawing. Running, surfing, chilling, mostly outdoor activities, other facts, he enjoys the scenery around him, his favorite colors are yellow and blue, and he enjoys popular music, and he loves Roshu. Another run-on sentence. Smiley face. Roshu was a spunky and very beautiful girl, electric hedgehog Pokemon, age 15, hobbies, frolicking through the fields, shopping at Quickville Mall, and cooking. Hmm, shopping and cooking, really? Of course. Because she's female. <sighs> I think, um, uh, have you guys ever heard of the Bechdel test? Uh... I forget the, the, the premise, but I think, uh, he was a writer or something that said the. What, what is it? It's like uh, the characters, female characters can't have a conversation without talking about men <laughs> or something like that. I don't think uh, Chris passes that. Uh, he's Sonichu's evil twin. Of course, the black one's evil, you fucking racist. <laughs> All right, listen. I'm guilty of doing a couple of walls of text in my own comic, uh, but whew, damn. So you have a Sonichu that's literally named Sonichu, but then you have other Sonichus and Rose Shoes, I guess. That, ah, oh, my brain hurts. And Jerk Cops. And lastly, there is me, the intrusive creator in Sonichu's story, Christian Weston Chandler. Intrusive is the right word. So if you don't know, Mary Lee Walsh was, uh, I believe, the dean at the college Chris went to. Um, when he uh, put up an attraction sign, I'll just put it on screen, because he was looking for a girlfriend to remove his virginity <laughs> i'm sorry but the phrasing of that sentence remove his virginity <laughs> but yeah um so we're gonna just keep going basically he was like you can't solicit she was like you can't solicit that and she's like oh i didn't know if true love was illegal in the state of virginia 
All right, I'm going to go, I guess, down here first. Basics, 5'10", born on February 24th, 1982. I think he was actually taller than that, which is funny because all these incels are out here like, oh, I need to be tall with light eyes when Chris Chan was tall with light eyes. I'm working towards a computer-aided drafting and design degree at Piedmont Virginia Community College. I am also single only, and I need a girlfriend. Need, okay. To describe myself in real life, I am a very creative person and I enjoy playing video games, Sonic the Hedgehog, Pokemon, Animal Crossing. Uh, I also like to build with Lego pieces and I enjoy most kinds of music. I am also fascinated with the Transformers. I also play the Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card games. I'm just a wild one who hasn't eaten much for over a week. Can you help me out? I don't believe it. A handsome... Pokemon who is like me. I've got to learn about him. Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. This is why you do thumbnails before you start drawing. So, um, I'll put a little B-roll in here. But you should actually write your script out first. And then, uh, make thumbnails, uh, with, with word balloons. Okay? If you're gonna make a comic. So people can read it normally, you know? Uh, and also try to avoid walls of text like I did in the earlier days of the comic, <laughs> of my comic. Uh, you don't want walls of text. You gotta try to make them, it's a visual medium, make it visual storytelling. Anyway, holy shit. Okay, that was episode two. I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. We might have to break this video up into parts. <laughs> we might do like, uh... Uh, infamous web comics uh, episode one part one part two. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move through this a little bit faster here. But uh, came stop KB. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. You just gotta um, put on a sign of true medallion, walk up and down the local mall, uh, and carry a sign around that says "Looking for a boyfriend free girl." That's that's how you get a girl girlfriend, guys. Subscribe for more dating advice. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll give the dating apps one more try and just change my bio to looking for a boyfriend free girl. <laughs> Don't use dating apps, by the way, they're cancer. Um, right, that one detail about Chris is that he hates pickles because they're penis shaped, and he hates because he's so super straight, which isn't true anymore. Now he's a bisexual trans woman or slash CPU goddess. Uh, but back in the day, when he was a male-identifying heterosexual male, um, or whatever the hell the words are these days, I don't know, that shit's getting weird. Uh, he hated every food shaped like a penis. You know how many foods are shaped like dicks? The best kinds. Yeah. Which brings us up to date. Please excuse me while I say my girlfriend. Wait, 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 wait. There was literally no need to do that flash forward. It's literally two pages... But then we got what happened that led up to those first two pages. Why did you need to do that flash for... I uh, whatever. Atrocious. Just atrocious. The art is rudimentary and childlike, creating a hard-to-follow story. Not to mention the order of the word bubbles is literally wrong at times. The layout of the panels are extremely sloppy and sometimes seemingly placed in a manner that confuses the reader. I usually encourage the majority of people to at least pick up a pencil and doodle, perhaps opening a whole new world of creativity to express themselves through. When I come across beginners, I always encourage them to keep pushing their skills. But this is a special case. He just needs to stop. Just stop. The fact there are 14 more issues to go through fills me with dread. The occasional typo tends to happen in any work of fiction. It's inevitable that you miss one or two. Most who consume art are forgiving for a stray here and there, but there are quite a few, and I know it's only going to get worse. Not to mention the poor grammar and the use of run-on sentences. There are also instances of mechanics and rules of this world, Quickville, not properly being explained to the reader. Only from watching the Geno Samuel documentary did I know that Chris Chan had a Sonichu form in the comic. If I just came across this on my own, unaware of Christery, this comic would be completely unintelligible. There seemed to be an instance or two that perspective was attempt, although admittedly I, who am recording this, also struggle with perspective drawing. So, at the very least, there's one good thing I can say. The thing that bothers me the most about this is the characterization of Rose Chu. The fact that her hobby list was limited to frolicking, cooking, and shopping is, for lack of a better word, troubling. The moment she went shopping and overspent on her Pokemon trainer's credit card because Sonichu is not Superman, 
is what I can only call chauvinistic, as misogyny has become a meme word and doesn't have a proper punch to express my perspective. Not to mention she seemed only to exist to be a girlfriend to Sonichu and nothing more. However, this is only the first issue, so I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt, even knowing Christery. From my perspective as a comic writer slash artist with a series that heavily features female characters, I don't enjoy this kind of writing. My personal approach is to write people first, before their gender, race, orientation, or what have you. I hope I'm doing well in that regard, not to mention that writing women as these hyper-feminine, ditzy, romance-obsessed plastic, ooh-ooh, I love shopping and cooking, ooh, types is just plain boring. Side note, there's nothing wrong with enjoying shopping or cooking, it's just Chris's perspective on women that I take issue with. Hopefully it gets better, but if the arc of Chris's life is any indication, it's going to get worse. Much, much worse. The summary of the plot is as follows. Sonic's fighting perfect chaos and collides with a Pikachu. There's a rainbow or some shit and there's a female Raichu. Boom, Sonichu and Roshu were born. Newly born Sonichu KOs perfect chaos, then he goes to meet Roshu. They fall in love instantly and become boyfriend and girlfriend without speaking more than 20 words to each other. They go to a mall and fight a Zapdos from Pokemon, commanded by some guy with a hard to remember or pronounce name who is the son of Team Rocket or some shit. Oh, and Chris himself shows up to shake hands with Sonichu. Then there's some weird one-off strips that don't make much sense at all. Yeah, strange plot. Overall, issue 0 gets a 1 out of 10. But that's more so for the fact that it was this first one. Like I said earlier, most comic creators' first work is a bit rough. I mean, have you seen the first manga Junji Ito made? Moving on to the second issue, issue one. Great number in scheme that I read in Brandon Anderson. Let's move on. Once again, the word balloons are backwards. Also, cherry cola? What? Uh, already within the first uh, three pages, I found like five typos. I guess that's going to be a running thing throughout this uh, review. I'm not sure, but he looks black to me. <laughs> All right. Um, not sure what you meant by that, Chris. <laughs> he is black. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I'll just call him Black Sonichu. Wait, wait, so the reason he's black is because they spilled some cherry cola into the DNA strands before they put it in the machine. What the fuck? Okay. I'm trying to find the good in this, okay? Like, like it's really hard, but I'm trying to, like, find... Some redeeming qualities. <laughs> this motherfucker literally said, "Milady." <laughs> oh, man. Okay, this is pain. Please subscribe to the channel. Whoa. Okay, what is this layout? Uh, so, is it like a question and answer format? Is that it? Yeah, what the fuck? Why? Ugh. There's so many words. There's so many. It's so... That has to be the stupidest thing he's drawn in his life, huh? I guess this was before he drew She Came for Quick. <laughs> if you know, you know. This panel of, I believe, Sonic's entrance? I'm not sure what that is. Is completely over his head. Well, I understand he did this hand-drawn instead of, like, digital like I do, but... And, and a lot of other comic artists, but... Wow, okay. Uh, we're doing this again, okay. Pardon me, but they're going to girl talk for a couple of hours, and I'd like to save time and money on my car insurance by switching the kick. <laughs> uh, that was a little funny, okay? I'll give him one, alright? You know, there are those rare instances where he's funny. All right, issue one review. Well, this issue was a bit more cohesive. The plot summary is as follows. The Team Rocket Kid and his dad team up with Dr. Robotnik from Sonic to create a clone of Sonichu. The scientists spill some cherry coke into the sample of Sonichu's DNA that Team Rocket Kid somehow obtained in the previous chapter. Black Sonichu, or Blatchu, was born. I'm going to keep calling him Black Sonichu because that's fucking hilarious. He's Sonichu's evil twin because, of course he is. Disgusting black creatures, get out of my sight. Sonic and Sonichu crash into each other and Rosechu is kidnapped to act only as a damsel in distress. 
Sonic and Sonic True Foil, the Doctor's Evil Plans or some shit. Then Amy Rose from the Sonic the Hedgehog series and Rose Chu talk about shopping and boys and shit. And then Chris interrupts because women just talk so much. Eh, 2 out of 10. The plot was more cohesive and there were instances where the art was bearable. However, the action choreography was quite weak and hard to follow. Not to mention the layout of the war balloons being so bad he numbered them. Here's hoping it'll get more interesting in the next issue. It was at this point John realized that the video idea was most likely detrimental to his mental health, and that proceeding further would be most displeasurable. However, the allure of more views crossed his mind and he soldiered on. This would probably not be a wise decision. Why am I British? Don't know. Why is my fake British accent so bad? Alright, issue number two. How many frickin' comics is this? Well, there's an attempt at some dynamic camera movement, at least. Um, I'm pretty sure I just read, like, three run-on sentences here. <laughs> I forgot about that little detail about Christery. Is that, um, he thought that he was Cherokee, or, like, half Cherokee, or, like, I don't know, whatever. He had Cherokee blood in him. But the thing is, later on in the story of his life, I guess, uh, he did a DNA test and it came back with zero Cherokee. <laughs> he also did a really racist video. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to play it. It's so racist. But basically, he got dressed up as a, like, chief. And, yeah, I'm not going to go into details. <laughs> go look it up yourself. Uh, oh, once again, word bubbles are backwards. All right, listen, if you're going to do one of these scenes where you got, like, two characters in a scene doing a quick back and forth, you know, like, uh, I recommend actually putting the word bubbles in the middle so they read, like, vertically, you know, and you don't have to, like, draw a map to figure out which order you read the words in. Um, sometimes you do need to get, like, a scene where characters have a little quick back and forth like this, but... Wow, this is a mess. <laughs> He's got his, uh, okay, so this is how he transforms into Christian Sonichu, which wasn't explained in the previous chapter. He just was in his Sonichu form. <laughs> Even Sonichu's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh, you gotta get your, uh, sponsored content in here. He was ahead of the curve, man. You know? This would be a perfect spot to put a sponsored segment if, uh, you know, somebody wanted to sponsor the channel, but... one's gonna sponsor this piece of shit video. <laughs> May I orbit your belt? What? Oh. What? But Orion's a constellation, dude. Word balloons are, like, all over the place. I mean, at least in the second one, when he knew the word balloons were all over the place, he numbered them. You don't need to cut to the map here. You could just cut to... to Sarama. Like, from a different angle. Like, in the same sort of environment. Oh, whatever. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Why is he saying the Hank Hill line? I'll tell you what, Sonichu. I got propane and propane accessories for sale. Do I look like I know what the hell a JPEG is? Just print the damn thing. Which is funny, because when he actually printed the physical copies, he printed them all in JPEG, so they were really compressed, and everybody that got them, back when uh, he was selling physical copies, they were like, why does it look so shit? It's because he printed JPEGs. Which is funny because he literally has a, a graphic design degree or computer aided drafting, whatever the hell they're calling it now. Ah, there it is! There it is! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> There's the light. You don't have to tell me twice, but during the Stone Age. <sighs> what? You can't dig into his pot of greed. That's a banned card. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Did she impale him with a lightning bolt? That's a little, uh, that's a little brutal for, uh, for a comic like this. But, uh, I, I do know it gets worse. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason this page looks more like a memorial than a dedication. <laughs> Hide and seed. Bro, the K and the D aren't even close to each other on a keyboard. Okay, well, that was absolute fucking pain. On to the next one. This was absolute pain. You'd think by the third issue he'd learn to better lay out the pages to make it more legible for the readers? The common mistake of the first two issues, word balloons being all over the place and hard to follow, rears its ugly head. The art is about on par with the first two issues, but I suppose the childlike illustrations are a bit of a style in and of themselves. As for the plot summary, Sonichu finds some cave with an elder dude. He tells him of some prophecy... 
Christian needs to go into the cave to do some ritual to unlock his powers or some shit. This creates a continuity error because he transformed into his Sonichu form in issue 1. One of his gal pals gets a Sonichu form and then they beat up this Wesley guy or something. They decide to team up to attack Mary Lee Walsh, who was a real person in Chris's life, by the way. Then they save the day. They then use a dimensional portal to return to Rutgersville, Virginia. Then Chris writes a bunch of stuff about his gal pal Sarah Hammer. And then he pulls up his mock-up for Sonichu on GameCube at the end. There was also a mock-up ad for Axe Body Spray in the middle that was kind of cringe. Should also note he thought Orion was an asteroid belt and not a constellation. Again, it was kind of cringe. There was one drawing I thought was kind of okay. Uh, 1 out of 10. The last issue was more interesting. This was kind of a cliche rival turns into ally to defeat greater evil story. I'm hoping the next chapter is more interesting. Alright, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far because, uh, I'm certainly not enjoying making it right now. <laughs> Alright, uh, issue 4, part 2, which is actually the 6th chapter, I guess you could call them. Dear Lord, alright. Christian Chandler in Make Attack Part 2. God help us. <sighs> Darkbind left after the battle to continue his quest for Princess Zelina Rose Chew's reawakening. Um. There was. Why, why does he need to reawaken this print? Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. None of this makes any sense. Oh man, all the soda pop gone to waste. Do you guys know that um, in an interview uh, before the incident, obviously, uh, because back when he did interviews, I think he did do one interview after he got out, but um, I think it was with the controversial uh, streamer Keffels, who I literally know nothing about, okay? I know there's like some kind of cancel mob around her or him? I don't know. I think this person's transgendered as well. Whatever. But apparently he or she, whatever, I interviewed uh, Chris Chan and um, wants to charge like $100,000 for the interview or some shit like that after he got it. What? Anyway, going back to what I was talking about first. Um, apparently in one of his interviews before the incident, um, he said his biggest regret was the Cake Forts video. Which, honestly, it sounds gross, but it really... I mean, it is a little gross, but it's not that bad. Where, basically, um, one of his trolls convinced him to sit on a cake bare-ass. <laughs> which is a recreation of some other shock video. Although, that's pretty tame compared to all the other shock stuff that was around at the time. But, uh... The biggest thing was the fact that he wasted a perfectly good cake. <laughs> not that he embarrassed himself. That he ruined a perfectly good cake. He takes a shower in three seconds, and people say he doesn't smell. Come on, shut up. Okay, that was a mighty quick shower. That's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dream sibling? Twin sister Crystal. I thought he wanted to have a daughter named Crystal. Now he wants a twin sister? Oh, whatever. You know, I do find it kind of strange after he transitioned that he didn't change his name to Crystal instead of Christine. I don't know. Whatever. So he got this heart torch thing from his ancestor who he had a vision of. Okay. Um, yeah, to be honest, I kind of like his black and white drawings more than his uh, colored drawings. Okay, so he used the torch to create a twin sister from an alternate dimension, I guess. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know how much more of this I can take, man. All right, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> Fuck me. This was a bad idea. This again with the one, two, three, four. I hate this so much. Dude. Walls of text. You want to try to n avoid this kind of thing in a comic, all right? It's a visual medium. Now, fair enough, I've done a few myself, but you want to try your best to avoid this kind of thing. Or at least make it cohesive because. Ah, oh, man. Oh. 
you to understand that spelling it out is the only way to find that one true girl to make into a girlfriend from the ground up. Okay. Yeah, um... Wow, okay. <laughs> Especially since he is very shy, even though he got banned from literally everywhere. Because he's so shy. <laughs> Oh, word bubbles are backwards. Again. Come on, dude. You're an American. Left to right. PVC citizens? Oh, I guess that's based off. It was PVCC was the college, right? He thinks he'll never find a boyfriend-free girl with his method than Mary Lee Walsh's cuckoo cuckoo. So, let me get it straight. He summoned a twin sister... From an alternate dimension with an item given to him by a vision of his ancestor to decapitate uh, the Walmart manager and then use his head to violently assault the dean or whatever from his college. Right. Oh my god, so many words. Alright, you know what? I'm not apologizing for my walls of text because they're few and far between compared to Chris Chan. Holy shit. They wear brown shoes because they're ashamed of their sausage feet? I'm sorry, sausage feet? What the fuck does that even mean? Do they got like Jimmy Dean toes? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? 1,500 pounds. That's not 1,500 pounds, dude. Come on, man. Not even like, I don't know, who, who's a famous fat person? Nick Cacato Avocado. He never hit 1,500, dude. Bro, it, you will literally die before you hit a thousand. <laughs> the jerk chief really loads versions for some odd reason and will attack one at first sight. <sighs> no, Chris. No, they don't. You were just being a nuisance. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay. We no want you on our land, so leave now or we kill you. All right, got to give him an accent, too, right? Good old classic racist Chris. <laughs> well, as we all know, all male creatures of any species will always fall for a very pretty face. And wow, does my twin sister Crystal have one. I sized the opportunity while the jerk cops were distracted and drooling. Now with my psychic powers. Oh! Oh, this is the origin of his psychic powers. Right, where he, like, slowly moved some mineral off his hand. You ever see that video? It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, Dimension Hall. Okay, man, he was on that Dimensional Merge stuff before the idea, guys. So, for this episode, he, uh, encountered some jerk cops, summoned his twin sister, who somehow distracted the jerk cops, um... Then he used psychic powers uh, to summon a ball or something, a black hole, suck up all their weapons, turn them into a bowling ball, and do a strike. Oh, okay, murder-suicide. Wasn't expecting that. Damn, Chris. This got really dark really fast. Oh, by the way, guys, it's highly likely that this video will get demonetized, and if it does, I'm not going to bother um, appealing it, so... I'd really appreciate it if you just leave a like and a comment, or subscribe if you haven't yet, that'd be nice. Hit the bell, all that YouTuber stuff. And check out the other content on the channel, I don't only do um, bad comic reviews, I do art stuff and sometimes some commentary stuff. Sometimes some shit posts too. I think that becomes a key character in the series, I've heard the name before. Like I said in those Genio Samuel documentaries, I literally zoned out whenever he went over a Sonichu comic. Especially, like, in the later era when he was losing his mind with the dimensional merge stuff. Where I'm like, bro, what is going on? I, I don't know about you. I don't, like, for you guys that don't know, the story of Christian, it starts off as, like, this dopey, um, you know, autistic guy that's struggling to find a lady friend, right? And innocently enough, you know? All right, I get it. The guy's autistic. He doesn't really understand, like, social cues and norms you know in the beginning but over time as the trolls like 
come into play and start fucking with him. Like at the beginning, you begin to you start to feel bad for him, but as the story progresses, you realize he's actually kind of not a good person. I can't really use the proper words because I don't want to get in trouble with the YouTube, but yeah, um, constantly e begging and you know having an inflated ego and such. But yeah, that's how the story starts out. Like, all right, the guy's like autistic. He struggles with social cues. He's just trying to look for a lady friend, right? You know. That's, uh, you could have a little empathy for that. But eventually, by the end of it, let's see, he becomes possessed by his fictional character uh, that he uh, collided with when he visited an alternate dimension uh, that he believes is going to merge with our dimension because he thinks he's the goddess of that world. Oh, yeah, and there was that incident with, uh, you know, the the, the incident. <laughs> You know, it's like really like escalation, man. Like shonen manga could never. <laughs> so she just summoned this dude just out of nowhere? Okay. After being thrown out of regions because having a girlfriend was illegal. I swear, if he came out a few years later, we wouldn't be in this situation, man. We would have just dismissed him as another incel. I swear. I swear. Only three days since I skipped my last deadline. Isn't he notorious for being extremely slow? Isn't it like 15 years for all these, like... What, what is it, 15 chapters? That's like a chapter a year. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, I'm pretty slow too, but still. <laughs> okay, he's got a lightning sword, and that's kind of cool. Lightning swords are cool. Holy Vector Sigma. You know, I, I find myself going, what? Um, Far more than any other work of fiction I've ever read. I I, I don't know, man. I, I think I've given up on giving this ch a chance. It's just nonsense at this point. <laughs> but this is... I think this is even before the trolls started to influence the comic, though. Oh, there's a Transformer. Because cause Chris loves Transformers. If you didn't know, he used to beg online for money. And whenever he got it, instead of, like, paying the bills, he would buy Transformers. So, uh, yeah. If you're giving him money on his streams just for the memes, please stop. Okay, it looks like there's an attempt at perspective here, but Christian is enormous in this scene. <laughs> These guys are like two feet tall. I'll give him props for trying a different angle, you know? That's about it. You know, if you're doing a series of comics like this, you don't really need a recap, okay? Um, if people forgot, they could just go back to the previous chapter, you know? Okay, so his imaginary twin sister tapped into, I believe this is Magichan's uh, psychic powers to make it, make him break his fall. Okay. Man, the uh, head jerk cop just gained like 500 pounds. Hog time. <laughs> it, it, it's hog tie, dude, not hog time. <laughs> okay, so she's telepathic now, even though... Chris uh, mislabeled it as telekinetic. If you don't know, uh, telekinesis is when you can move stuff with your mind, but telepathy is when you can read minds. Uh, I, I already know that this the story makes less sense as it goes along because of, well, Chris's mental state was like in decline um, in the later years and probably still is to this day. I mean, he thinks he's Jesus now or some shit. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a tragedy, honestly, if you really think about it. I'm thinking back. Thinking back to that, like, little drawing that he did of Eggman dancing, and inserting himself, just laughing about how funny it was. You know, I could see myself drawing something like that when I was ten years old. You know, the guy's got, like... Severe autism and like part of that's like you're kind of like mentally younger, you know uh, I don't know if we'd be here if it wasn't for the trolls if it wasn't for the internet if maybe he Showed up later. I don't know uh, This whole thing is just th this is an American tragedy unfolding You know part of me thinks that this whole Sonic Chu comic was sort of a coping mechanism really rather than a power fantasy I mean, he still did that thing, so, you know, I don't really feel much empathy, but at the same time, I don't know if we'd be here if everything didn't happen the way it did, you yeah. know? Maybe if he listened to some of those, uh, people that were trying to help him, and not the trolls. 
Because anytime one of the people that tried to reach out to him to like be like, yo, dude, like, do some self improvement, clean your house, get a job, he was like, screw you, trolls. <laughs> but but then the idea guys came along. It's like, dude, there's an alternate dimension. It's like, no way. Yes, we're going to C C197. Kind of weird, huh? The practical advice was dismiss the trolls, and. The trolling was taken at face value. Anyway, let's keep going. Crystalina Rose Chew. Okay. Again, with the map scope that's really hard to read. You don't have to do this. You could just say where you are, right? PVC citizens or whatever. You could have just put that in. What? I'm done trying with this. She is twice as tall as that building. Like, look, man, I know my own work, my perspective's a little off sometimes. More often than not, but Jesus Christ. Oh hey, it's that um that one country's flag. Is that uh that's one of the Scandinavian ones. I don't know what that's doing there. <laughs> no, actually I think that's a top down view. Okay, I think this is Crystalina Rose Chew. Okay, yeah, and she's doing like a spin dash or from this perspective it looks like a drop dash. Well I gotta say, I think I like Crystalina Rose Chew better than um regular Rose Chew, I guess. <laughs> Seems like slightly better. Then Rose Chu. This Chris Delina Rose Chu needs Chris Chan's help, right? Uh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> now you may be thinking, with my critique of the way that uh, Chris Chan is writing women, that I'm some kind of ugh, ugh, male feminist. Ugh. No, because that that that's a dirty word. And to be honest, male feminists are usually predators. Okay, I just think that these are really shittily written characters in general. <laughs> uh, uh, like, it just seems like the female characters are here to either uh, act as uh, romantic interest for the male characters or to uh, be, you know, sort of damsel in distress types or uh, to show that, in this case, that uh, Christian needs to be the one to save the day, right? She can't handle anything on her own. I just hate the way he writes female characters. I'm sorry. <sighs> this was a slog to get through. One of the cardinal sins of poor comic execution is the dreaded wall of text. There were enough walls in this issue to get Donald Trump fully erect. Dear Lord. To summarize the plot, it's basically just a power fantasy that Chris made to show himself defeating the alleged jerk cops and managers. There's also the inclusion of Mary Lee Walsh as some sort of grand villain. When in actuality, a role in Christery was simply telling him not to solicit himself like a prostitute on campus. There's also a PSA about jerk cops that was extremely long and wordy, but a bit humorous, admittedly. Oh yeah, and there's an imaginary twin sister named Crystal that Chris made up, although I thought Crystal was supposed to be his fantasized daughter. Whatever. Yet again, I take issue with the way that Chris portrays female characters. You might be misguided in thinking I'm classifying myself as a bit of a male feminist excuse me but that's not true chris is a male feminist stated himself before the transition and as such most male feminists turn out to be predators case in point with christery anyway <laughs> anyway my issue is with crystal or crystalina rose shoe or whatever who seemed to rescue chris from the evil mary lee walsh but needed his help to defeat the evil or some shit because none of the female characters can do anything on their own at all the best method for these two would have been to escape, but Chris needed to draw himself killing the people he disliked. I assume it only gets worse from here, and again, knowing Christery, it certainly will. Not to mention the action scenes were at their hardest to read in this issue. Really confusing. 2 out of 10. Step down from the previous issue, and just way too many words. Moving along. I just scrolled ahead just to see how long this chapter was, because luckily Chris numbers these page by page. And uh, we're looking at a nearly 60-page chapter here. But, this being drawn in 2006, I believe the same year YouTube was invented. Or is it 2005? Um, maybe, just maybe, it's going to get more interesting. Because that may have been around the time that Chris appeared on YouTube. Everybody loves classic Chris. Alright, so we got uh, Big Evil Mary Lee Walsh over here. Uh, we got Sonichu. Uh, Chris Chan's trapped in some kind of, like, prison or something with Mickey Mouse ears. 
Um, and then Sonichu's got to save the day. And there's some sort of jewelry store over here, it looks like. And that's the only store in the street. Again, it looks like an attempt at perspective was made, but he gave up. Also, only she's casting a shadow, not Sonichu. Okay. <sighs> Alright, here we go. Issue number five. Best friend's Cherokee and wedding. Okay. William Spicer. Is that a real guy? I don't remember that much. Oh, is this, um... Is this supposed to be Megan Schroeder? If you guys are unfamiliar with Chris Theory, this was sort of the beginning of the end. I, it's not her fault, it's his fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, essentially she was the only one that was ever nice to him, and uh, he took it um, the wrong way, and basically, um, yeah, one thing led to another, and next thing you know, um, yeah, we ended up in the Dimensional Merge slash um, Incest Saga. I really doubt this video is going to stay monetized, so uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Is he, like, redrawing these, or is he just, like, re-importing these panels? Because they don't look that much different. I mean, that's a technique that's used sometimes. I, I think I've done it once or twice myself. But, like, these look exactly the same as the first time. You guys can't see my face right now, but I'm sort of doing, like, that Tucker Carlson thing. You know, have you seen that face? I'll put it on screen. I'm doing that right now. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? So, wait, hold on. I'm only on page 17, so let me get this straight. There was a wedding of his old friend, I, I think Sarah Hammer, who I think was a real person. Uh, Wes Azaley Sonichu came in, um, kidnapped the bride... And uh, then Chris Chan transformed and had a Yu-Gi-Oh duel with Wes Azaley. Then, uh, yeah, okay, this is uh, Megan Schroeder. Came in and, and she's got a, a Pokemon. Fuck! <laughs> ah! Alright, luckily, we're almost halfway through the series. Oh, and she's Sailor Moon for some reason. Okay. I know, I'm not that familiar with Sailor Moon. Is it any good? Should I watch it? I don't know. I used to just see, like, a little bit of it back in the day when I was waiting for Dragon Ball Z to come on. <laughs> I don't know. Any uh, Sailor Moon heads in the, in the comments? Should I check it out? Should I read the manga? I know they did, like, uh, sequel series, too. Are those any good? Let me know if you're a, you're a Sailor Moon head. You know what's funny is that in the English dub... I know this one detail is apparently two of them were, like, lesbians or something, which is fine. You know, whatever. But in the English dub back in the day, because, you know, it was, like, the early 2000s when we got it over here. You know, different era. They changed them from lesbians to cousins, which made it so much worse. <laughs> For some reason, I feel like this image is traced. I feel like I've seen, like, an image like this from, like, maybe the Sonic Archie comics or something like that. Wait, I gotta rewind. When the when did he summon Dark Magician Girl? Where 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 is she? I don't see Dark Magician Girl. Did I miss that? Yeah, that never happened. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a little funny. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that got me to blow some nose out, some nose out my air, some air out my nose. Oh, here we go with the words. <laughs> so many words. <laughs> Okay, so in this fictional universe, apparently, uh, love is forbidden, and Mary Lee Walsh is in charge of it, and, wow, okay. I'm hoping the other comics in this, uh, video series I'm doing of, like, infamously bad webcomics, or, like, notorious or whatever webcomics are actually, like, a little bit more cohesive and better executed, you know, but, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, why is the mayor at the mall, bro? Shouldn't the mayor be in, like, his office, like, doing paperwork and shit? <laughs> Has the right spunk amount among all ladies. What the fuck does that even mean, bro? No attempt at perspective was made here. <laughs> I think they're supposed to be sitting on a park bench, but, uh... I don't know. Kind of looks like they're leaning against a wall. Oh my god. Here we go with all the words again. Rue track from Monica Real. The voice actor from Funimation? 
Bulma? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did she do music? I don't know. It doesn't matter. She's a horrible person anyway. Check my previous video or two previous videos when I check my video about localizer for more information. Hardest to read map I've ever seen in my life. Like what is happening here? Other people I don't see them true police villains Nary Lee Walsh, okay. Jesus Christ the dark shadow within the adopted child in Veri what? Viridian, isn't that from Pokemon? Uh, Viridian City? I don't know. Uh, like I said, I only know of the Gen 2. Okay, not big on Pokemon. I was hoping this would be a little bit more Sonic-centric, because I am very familiar. I'm a big Sonic fan, unfortunately. No, I don't have autism. You know, at the very least, I can say the character designs are recognizable. Um, I don't remember these two. I think this one's Angelica Roshu. They, they were only, like, in, like, one page previously. But I could tell which character is which. I could at least say that. At least his character designs are distinct enough where I could recognize them, even though they're entirely derivative. So, you know, maybe that's part of the reason. But I can say I do recognize Chris Chan and Crystal Chan or whatever the fuck. <laughs> you know? At least the character designs are legible. Oh, I was having fun sampling this wonderful perfume. Right, because that's what girls do. They just go shopping and they try perfume. That's that's all they do, right? And you might be thinking like, hey man, like, do you want like a Mary Sue kind of character? No, I don't like that either. That's the other side of the spectrum of bad writing. Of female characters. You know? I find... I find Chris Chan's writing just as bad as like... Mm, what's a good comparison? Oh, okay, I got one. Um, I actually don't play Western-made video games that were made after 2016. I actually gave one a try, though. It was called Control. Uh, I got a lot of rave reviews and everything, and the gameplay looked kind of cool. It's like a third-person shooter, but you get psychic powers, so I'm like, oh, hey, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, I tried to play the game. I hated the fucking characters in that game so goddamn much. Right? I thought the actual plot was kind of interesting, like this weird, like, sci-fi stuff going on. But the characters, especially the women, were so fucking unbearable. Especially the main character. Literally a Mary Sue. Alright? Like, everything about the writing in that game pissed me off. Oh, and all the male characters were like, Oh, I don't know what to do. Please help me, woman. <laughs> you know? That's the opposite end of the spectrum of poor writing. You know what I mean? <laughs> that aside, aside, let's resume. Okay, so that's Crystalina Rose Chu, and we're back to Chris Chan Sonic Chu. Luckily, the transformations take up three pages, so I could just speed by them as fast as possible. Is that his feet? Like, in one? What am I looking at here? I think that's his feet. But, like, they're not... It just looks like a big brown ball. Again, word bubbles backwards. Like, come on, dude, you're American. Make him American style. Since we're being derivative of Dragon Ball here, I want to talk about Dragon Ball for a second. You ever noticed that um, during the series, whenever Goku throws a Kamehameha, he's always charging it up, and, like, the villains just kind of stand there. You realize that? Like, it, sometimes it takes, like, a whole ass minute to get the Kamehameha fired. I mean, it's just fires in a straight line. Why don't they just, like, step to the side? Like, what the fuck, dude? The heavy metal rock band is going on here. <laughs> what? Who the fuck says that? <laughs> okay, I kind of like this panel, this ominous shadow. Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> His friend, friend, I guess former friend at this point. Megan can actually draw not so bad. This is pretty good. This was nice. Finally, we got some good art in here. <laughs> oh, it's sort of like a palate cleanser after all those issues of Sonichu. Wow. Okay. Good job. Well, the collision between Chris's real life and the comic is at an all-time high in this chapter. The introduction of Megan Schroeder into this comic is most unfortunate. She's got to live the rest of her life as a key figure in Christery because of it. As for the plot, um... 
there's a wedding, Chris fights some dude, then Mary Lee Walsh attacks Quickville with her legion of jerk cops, and Chris assembles the Sonichus and Rosechus of the world. To clarify, uh, Sonichu and Rosechu are the names of the main characters, or I suppose former main characters since Chris put himself center stage. But at the same time, Sonichu and Rosechu are the names of the male and female versions of the Sonichu species, I guess? I I'm done trying to make heads or tails of this. It's whatever. At some point, Megan Schroeder shows up and transforms into Sailor Moon or something. Then Crystal, Chris's imaginary twin sister, who's also named after his hypothetical future daughter, by the way, uh, gets kidnapped by Mary Lee Walsh. Oh, and uh, Nate Cirque shows up again, and he transforms into something. Notably, there was an ominous panel with his transformed shadow that I admit was done pretty well. Hopefully we get to see this new form and Chris doesn't forget about it. Oh, and there was a nice drawing of Sailor Moon by Megan at the end. It was a nice palate cleanser after going through seven issues of Sonichu. Luckily, it seems we're at the halfway point. Uh, two out of ten. About the same quality as last time, but there were way less walls of text. Also, the action scenes were somehow even more illegible than before. A weak entry, but the infusion of events from Chris's life is making it more interested. Onward to issue number six, which is the eighth entry. All right, Sonichu number six, the eighth entry. Let's go. Oh, released on Independence Day, huh? Oh, there he is. There's the old Christian, the classic shirt and everything. <sighs> you know, I was thinking this was a nice tribute to uh, his dog that passed away, but the chivalry ain't deadline really took me out of it. Oh, he found the dimensional portal. That's where the merge started. Why would the mayoral office be above the shopping center? It should be in town hall, shouldn't it? Wait, her dream is to be an aide to a big cheese like Chris Chan, mayor of Quickville? In a relationship with her UG boyfriend? Jesus Christ, dude. You know, I thought he was making a nice little tribute to his dog that passed away, but... Jesus. Oh, I have really mixed feelings about this episode. On one hand, I think it's nice he made a little tribute to his dog that passed away. On the other hand, you got stuff like, uh, she retired early to pursue her dream of being the aide of a big cheese like me, and in a relationship with her ugh boyfriend. Like, dude, come on. Do like the mixed media, though. I think that's kind of neat. Hadel? Easy on my what? Can somebody translate that for me? Is that like a hedgehog thing? Because they become hedgehogs or something? I, I don't fucking know. And who doesn't remember DB? Me. Me. Nobody remembers DB. Okay, so they defeated Mary Lee Walsh with the power of super heavy metal. And uh, the dog came in. <sighs> Why do I do this to myself? I hope this video gets lots of views. If I wasn't kicked off the team for... Musu of venal defense? I could have easily broken his record? What? Bro, like, I, I think I could handle the typos, but like, I, I'm trying to decipher these hieroglyphics. What the fuck am I reading? Uh, I'm a, I think they're talking about um, somebody's basketball game for some reason. It does hating the 99% of the male population, that's... That's Chris Chan. He, he hates males. <laughs> Specifically males. Not men. Males. Because he thinks they stole away all the girls from him. And not that he's a fucking creep and that no girl wants to be with him. <laughs> I cannot be deprived of my balls. <laughs> uh, well, we're doing that thing again where we put the panel over the character's head. Very nice. Okay, so, some advice for you guys. If you're going to inevitably print out your comics for physical copies, um, something that I'm running into a bit of a snag with uh, physical copies of the first volume of my comic slash manga. I kind of like to call it more of a manga, even though it reads American style. When you uh, place your word bubbles, make sure none of them like are on the edge like this, because what, the print machines, they might cut off like the last two letters. 
you know, like the N and that S right there. It might get cut off when you send it to print in the print shops. Okay, so make sure you're like in a safe zone. Um, you can even put up guides if you're using something like Adobe InDesign. So, uh, yeah, there's a little tip for you. Yeah, see like this over here? This is way too close to the edge. Oh my god, ancient. Dude, it's A-N-C-I-E-N-T. Come on. The background of his pants, the same color. It looks like... He... <sighs> I give up. I give up on this. We're just going to laugh now. My fantasies blow vastly towards my opposite gender. I am so offended. Put a shirt on. Oh, oh put a shirt. I, I thought that said put a shirt on. You know. First of all, he does have a shirt on, kind of, a seatbelt kind of thing. You know what? This is kind of funny. I gotta like this page. Oh my! <laughs> I gotta read this again. Hold on. Og. Oh my dog. My fantasies blow vastly towards my opposite gender. I am so offended. Put a shirt on. You know what they should do? They should take this comic and uh, force a uh, terrorist to read this for interrogations. Yeah, that's a great idea. That they're they're going supersonic racing. Everybody supersonic racing. Try to keep your feet up on the ground. Everybody supersonic. Yo, I don't care what y'all say. Sonic R has one of the like top five soundtracks in all of the Sonic games. Okay. That's not debatable, that's just an objective fact. I could have had my pick among my fellow Lancers, but our genes just don't match well. What? What? Is he talking about like cross species breeding? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if something came out like he did that these days, especially after the incident. By the way, if you don't know, uh, the Chandlers have a history of uh, animal neglect and abuse. So, uh,. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't get more shit for that over the years. Because they really should have. Like, seriously. I think it was the Gamer from Mars documentary when he actually went to go visit him. Uh, literally, the dogs are like... I, I, I don't even... I, I've never heard a dog howl the way the Chandler's dogs howled. Yep, I'm on TV. Oh, okay. I remember that one. <laughs> Doesn't that have the clip of him trying to do karate? I love that clip, it's so funny. I got a little chunly within me. Oh, that Animal Crossing video apparently might actually be the first Let's Play ever made. Yeah, I gotta say, the little tribute to um, his dog, Patty, was kind of nice. I, I did sort of like the mixed media bit here, right? But at the same time, um, this line right here, <laughs> Chivalry ain't dead. And this line right, right here, right, Alice and Amber, age 26, in a relationship with her ugh boyfriend. I'm like, come on, dude. I thought you were writing a nice little thing about your dog, but, oh, uh, man. Oh, also, also, hold on. Uh, she retired early to pursue her dream of being the aide of a big cheese like me. <laughs> what? <laughs> You know? I don't know. But for the most part, I do think the little Patty chapter here was kind of nice, you know? I mean, again, the guy's got autism, you know? It, 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 this felt like a little bit more of a cope sort of coping mechanism sort of thing to deal with the passing of his dog, you know? Rest in peace, Patty Chandler, you know? Honestly. Uh, I can't even remember what happened. They were fighting... Mary Lee Walsh, and then, let's see, Megan Schroeder showed up, and then there's, like, The Last Supper, and then, was that, was that Darkvine, or was that Magichan? I don't remember. They're having, like, the meeting of the hedgehogs, and they gotta 
get the Chaos Emeralds. No, not the Chaos Emeralds. The Super Pokeballs or some shit. Um, Jesus Christ. Okay, then there's... Uh, I think that was Nate Cirque transformed into this green hedgehog and bondage gear. This uh, portal. They go to an alternate dimension. This page is really funny. I don't know why, but this page is really fucking funny. I love this page. This is my favorite page of Sonichu right here. Um, you know, I'm not even going to bother writing a review for this one. Um, it's really, they transform. They fight in the mall, then they go to the high school, then uh, uh, Orange Sonic uh, kills the Green Sonic in bondage gear. Uh, 2 out of 10. I thought the tribute to his dog was kind of a nice little touch, and I thought the mixed media was pretty cool, but other than that, the rest of the plot was um, painful, to say the least. Alright, I'm not going to bother doing our little review segment for this. We're just going to move on. Remind me that I'm a frustrated virgin. I, I really do need to emphasize, guys. There's nothing wrong with being a virgin, okay? Seriously. Everything wrong with being an incel, though. They're, they're not quite the same, okay? <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I really can't. I I'm calling it here, man. Seriously, guys. If you really, really want me to finish uh, this story, um, let's see. If this video gets, I don't know, over 100 likes based off of my subscriber count, um, I will do a sequel and finish this. But I just can't do this anymore. This is one of the most poorly executed, hard to follow stories that I have ever read in my life. It's just, I can't, I can't finish this, man. I just can't. I really do mean it when I said this should be used to torture terrorists. Like, this is agony. Agony. The art is bad, obviously. And, like, you know, it doesn't look like it's gotten better. And having seen um, clips from his newest streams where he's actually doing drawing streams, it doesn't look like it's going to get better. And uh, all these walls of text, this horrendous layout, the, 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 the characters are hard to follow. Um, there's so many typos and grammatical errors. This is just... I don't even know what's going on in this story anymore. Like... I just can't take it anymore, man. Even knowing Chris Dury, I cannot take this story anymore. <laughs> I'm going to call it here, put a bookmark in it, and if this video gets over 100 likes, I will continue and finish it off in a part two, I guess. Yeah, I just can't take it anymore, man. I'm tapping out here, you know? Also, it's been like over a week since I uploaded my last video and, you know, algorithm. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, guys, um, sorry for cutting it short, but I just can't fucking take it anymore. So, uh, thank you for watching this video and, uh, watching me suffer. Um, check out my comic over on my website. Um, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Over 100 likes, we will do part two. And, uh, yeah, check out other content on the channel. I certainly have a lot of it at this point. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I give up. Oh, hey, uh, post-edit John here. I just want to say, I actually have more comics planned to go through um, that are infamously bad. Um, I'll just put them on screen, the ones that I want to do first. But uh, if you guys have any suggestions for uh, infamously bad webcomics to go over for future installments, if you like this video, please let me know in the comments. I would really like that. I need uh, viewer-generated content, please. Everybody loves that, right? <laughs> Gotta put you guys to work. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.